amazing career. You played 14 years. You got a ring. But you got to play on some incredible team. So after you left Boston, you got traded. You got a real good contract when you got traded. Um, that was stunning that they traded you. And, <laughs> and it was like the next day, it was like, I mean, for, you know, Kendrick Perkins was a Celtic. He was a Celtic. He, nobody ever thought. And it was like all of a sudden, Kendrick Perkins was a Thunder, which sounded strange. And then you signed. And like, like what, days after you got traded, right? Like in the season. Yep. Yeah, before like, I even played the game. Right. It was like, man, Perk is Kendrick Perkins is a Thunder. Like at that time, the Thunder was still on the come up. You really didn't know much about him. Then you played with the Harden Westbrook Durant teams. You made it to the finals with them. Like, that's amazing just playing on those teams. And then later on, you played with LeBron and the Cavs. I mean, you got to experience, and like you were a core member of that Thunder team that went to the finals. Yeah. Um, and, and it was a it was a it was a crazy but great experience. Like all of us, I went from being one of the young guys in the locker room with the Celtics to actually being the voice in the locker room with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Like gelling everything together. Now KD and Serge may say, oh Perk line, but they know they line. Like I took <laughs> all of guys under my wing. I orchestrated team dinners. I had card games in my hotel room. I forced guys to, to interact because that's what I came from. I came from that. And so like, that's why they traded for you actually. Right. Right. I mean, right. they wanted a center, but they also wanted a guy who knew how to win. <laughs> but look, but Wendy, you know what I call, I like, I call myself a groupie at some, like some point. Cause I played with so many hall of famers. Like, I played with so many Hall of Famers, like from KG, Ray, Paul, Braun, Russ, uh, KD, James, Shaq, uh, Gary Payton. Like, that's nine Hall of Famers right there in this cell. Like, and, like I, I, it, it was just crazy now that I think back on it. Even Kyrie, I mean, he'll be a Hall of Famer too. That's 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the dynamics, that, like, think of the dynamics that ultimately happen between Ray Allen, Rondo, Pierce, and Garnett. That was that's an amazing dynamic. Russ, KD, and James. It's still playing out to this day. Still, right? still playing out. Kyrie and LeBron, still playing out to this day. Like you yeah. witnessed, like you were there, and part of the reason why you were there was to help with that. You know, yeah. like I remember when when <laughs> one of the memories I have of you is late in your career. That game in in Boston, the Cavs are playing the Celtics. You are a beloved Celtic. When they introduced your name, your name is on that one of those banners up there. You are a beloved Celtic. They love you in Boston to this day. Kelly Olenek has that moment where he pulls, purposely or not, pulls Kevin Love's so, arm out of the socket. Yeah. Really, really kneecaps that Cavs team. Then Kyrie got hurt later, but it was, a, it was three nothing. It was, it was game four. The Cavs were up three nothing. The Celtics were still on the come up and you came in the game after that and you leveled Jay Crowder because you had to send a message that you weren't guys weren't going to be handled like that. Um, you, had, you had to do it to a, to a guy in green and white in Boston. I mean, not the that, defining moment of your career, but like that was your job then. That was my job. That was my job. And my job was also to protect Braun. And Jay Crowder was being a pest that series. Now he wasn't stopping him, but it was the little roughing up and things to that nature. And to this day, Perk, they say FJ Crowder in the playoffs when they face him. That's crazy. And you know what? You know the best part about that? I got away with a hard illegal shoulder screen on Jay Crowder. I got fined and didn't have to pay it. Because <laughs> Griff, Griffin Braun paid it for me. So, I mean, I, I just right? got a whole free way out. And, and the Celtic fans still love me to this day. So it was That's cool. right. And That's the right. Cavs fans. What What is your uh, – do you have a favorite memory with Durant and Westbrook? They're like a, a favorite team or like something that happened there that you take away from that? You know what? It was actually – it was actually, it was actually us going down 0-2 in the Western Conference Finals. That's what I saw what those young guys were made of. We were playing the San Antonio Spurs, and we went down 0-2 in the 
and we won four straight after that. And in those four games, it was either James took it over, KD took it over, or Russ took it over. And that's when I knew that those guys were going to be special. I knew that when I first got to the OKC. Because when I first got there, remember, before they got their state of the art uh, practice facility, we have to remember, they had a, they was practicing in the old skating ring. That's so, a roller rink. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And so, and so when I got there, I'm used to not practicing one because we right. didn't practice with the Celtics. But I remember Scott Brooks calling me in. He was like, look, Perk, I'm telling you, it's a lot different over here. You know, if you need days off, just tell them. I'm like, Scotty, look, man, I'm 26 years old. I'm fine. OK, he like, I'm telling you, man, these guys love to play basketball. So I, I was already there. They were coming off a road off a of back to back. They had just lost to the Magic. And it's like, oh, yeah, practice at 10 the next morning. I was like, practice? What you mean? And they came <laughs> in and they went dead ended. Like they didn't come off a of back to back and just got in there at two o'clock in the morning. And I just remember watching KD put in so much, so many hours of work on his game before practice and after practice. And two days later, KG called me like, bro, what you doing, man? I miss you. Hey, how them young fellas is over there? Is they really like that? I'm like, bro, listen, these guys punch in the clock, dog. Like, real talk. He like, nah, man, you just woofing, man. You on, you just, you you over there, you, you good now. You done got your money, you acting different. I'm like, nah, listen, bro, this has nothing to do with me, dog. They really punch in the clock. And I was like, he was like, all right. I was like, bro, you go see, you go see. So, I mean, just, it was so many moments, man, just with them, just, I was more amazed on how they were gym rats. Like, I was amazed, like, we were laying in cities at six o'clock and, K and KD would have a middle school and high school gym already set aside for him to go get a workout in. Like, those guys, like, lived in the gym. It was ridiculous. KD's skills, one of the most skilled players I've ever seen, and it comes from that work. You see it. Um, you know, when you were around Kyrie and LeBron, it was – you joined at midseason. It was later. Um, they had a – that partnership, LeBron tried, but it never quite took. Um, and it was too bad because they won in 16, and they, they could have won in 17, and they would have had a fighting chance – if they stuck around, if Durant had decided to leave, if they'd stuck together for many years, but Kyrie was just never, he and LeBron never saw the, you know, Kyrie never envisioned playing with LeBron. LeBron was like, Hey, I'm going to come play with Kyrie. Kyrie was like, wait a minute. I signed to be the franchise leader. And he never, there was never a bond there. Like there was some of the other places you were. It, it was. And being a guy in the locker room, Wendy, and this is an unbiased, like, realistic thing LeBron did everything in his power to try to embrace Kyrie as a little brother and show him the way Kyrie was just like rebellion like he was like no I'm not doing it like no I'm not coming to team dinners I just didn't show up he was like always doing his own thing and it hurt Braun when Kyrie left it hurt Braun to to know some of the things that Kyrie said before he left to go off to Boston before he demanded that trade. Like, because Braun did everything in his power. And for him to say, oh, I'm tired of being in Braun's shadows, it was like, Kyrie, like, at the moment, I don't think you really realize, like, who you really playing with, the attention that you really got, like, where you was before Braun actually got here. You know what I mean? Like, it was really, you was in an irre irrelevant situation. And, I mean, you know, it, it's unfortunate because, you know, if they was able to stick together, which I know Braun wanted to make it work. I mean, like you said, Wendy, who knows? They could have definitely won two or three more. Yeah. All right. Before we let you go, I want to ask you about some stories that you remember. One of them is a story that Steven Adams told me. You know, they had drafted him in Oklahoma City really to kind of be your replacement, fair yeah. or not. And uh, he's, he's a great player, man. And, you know, he's from New Zealand. He's got 16 or 17 brothers. His brothers used to beat his ass. And his dad used to come out. He was the youngest of the six, 17 kids. And his dad used to come out and like knock the brothers away. And then his dad passed away when he was a young boy. And whenever he called for help, the brothers would beat him more. So he's just really tough guy. 
he comes in to Oklahoma City first year. He's your backup. And he says he'll never forget this. First day of practice, he's guarding you in the post. And you elbow him in the, in the solar, in the chest, in the solar plexus. And he's, <laughs> and you turn and you go, there's only one, sil- I'm the only silverback. There's yeah. the only silverback. Yeah. I love that story. He loves that story. Um, you kind of nurtured him. But like that, 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 you know, that's amazing I, how you developed that. I, I did. And, and I, I felt, I felt it though. Like when they drafted him and I, and I saw him doing his testing and stuff, I'm like, hold on, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. He's like, it was everything about it. And I remember going against him in training camp and I was like, I can't move this dude. So the one time I did kind of get him, I was like, yeah, I'm the MF and silver back in here. You better know, like, <laughs> I was just fired up for that moment, but it's really like an old kind of like veteran guy knowing that this young guy about to take your minutes and, and just, and like in due time. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember your, maybe their second or third year when Paul Pierce spit at LeBron on the bench and they almost got in a fight in a preseason game? That was our rookie year, I believe it was. Was it right? your rookie year? We was in, we First was in or second Col- year? Yeah, we was in Columbus, Columbus Ohio. That's right. And I remember that. And you know what? They had, like, they never liked each other ever since. It was about Hell to no. be, It was a brawl in the back, about to be a brawl in the back. I remember me and Drew Gooden, you know, kind of going back and forth. And, you know. That was the closest, to my knowledge, the closest legitimate fight LeBron ever had. Now, there may be something I don't know about. Paul yeah, Spit. At, go ahead. Yeah, but, but when did you think about it? Like. I had to ask P, like, what was you thinking to spit over there? Somebody like that's the ultimate disrespect. And you could tell because every time they matched up, it was personal. It was personal. I was surprised when I saw them a few weeks ago kind of dab each other up at the game at, uh, when Brian played in Boston and Paul was there in his pajamas. <laughs> well, you remember, obviously, one of the great games people don't remember is game seven. You, you guys won the title. LeBron had 40 Sunday afternoon at the Garden. Mm-hmm. LeBron 44, Pierce 41. Classic, classic. classic. Back when scoring 40 was something. Yes. Now there's six guys who score 40 a week. But um, all right, one more. Summer League. Lenny Cook. You remember playing with Lenny Cook? Do you remember that at all? I remember him being on the team. And they, he was like the next big thing, and then he fizzled out, and everybody was excited he was going to – and then they never played him. <laughs> I, do remember that. I do remember that. I just remember Lenny Cook from ABCD camp and Braun tearing his ass up. But then past that, I do remember like he was supposed to be that next big thing and they never gave him a shot out of the bitch. I remember that for sure. Were you at that ABCD camp? Yeah, I was there. I was there. I was one of the top players that was there. You sure were. <laughs> uh, what do you remember about that week? Well, one, I believe that was Braun and I sophomore year. Sophomore to junior, yeah. Yeah, sophomore to junior. And I remember it was just all Lenny Cook. He had the cameras following him around, all this. And every game he would be going between his legs 100 times, pull up jumpers, everybody was just watching him. And all of a sudden, everybody crowded around that court. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Lenny Cook came down the first position. He went between his legs a hundred times and hit a pulled up jump and he talked noise to LeBron. And after that, it was strictly the LeBron James show. Like, and, and when I say that, Wendy, I mean that. I mean, he went to work. And that right there, that, that probably ended Lenny Cook, to be honest with you. And it made LeBron, in all honesty, that made LeBron. Yeah. That, that day. Yeah. Um, and when you, the night you guys won the title, can you just put into words, you know, you spent, I mean, it's gotta be one of the moments of your life, but like just that moment, you know, KG screaming, anything is possible. You're at the garden. You're becoming a historic, you know, his, history seven. Remember they had those signs up green 17. Yeah. Like they, they put it on you guys. You better yeah. win green 17 they did. title. I mean, that experience had to be amazing. It it was when it was it was unreal at the moment, and it actually didn't hit me until the parade. Hmm. Like 
in that moment, you like, yeah, the trophy, the cigars, the the champagne. But when you give it a moment to digest and you get to the parade, that's when it's like, man, it's real. But it wasn't what happened at the arena. It's what happened after the, the arena. It's that we went together and we went to KG house and his wife cooked. His wife at the time, Brandy, had four big pots of spaghetti and she had brownies because <laughs> that's what KG loved to eat. And it was just us up into, I don't know, the next day. I mean, partying like no other. The Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.